it's a it's a great honor uh, and a privilege to uh to have uh thomas smith with us here at the fifth direction um at least for me this morning thomas uh moving into his his evening um but uh welcome uh, i'm glad to be here wherever here is between mm, yeah. the two of us exactly you know so so thomas is a is, is a renowned poet um and uh i guess you could say a kind of stalwart of um the the minnesota men's conference and and, and men's work in general um and it's just a, it's going to be terrific just to have a conversation with you thomas about about um all these different things but i'd like to start just to kind of orient ourselves mm -hmm. if you could mm -hmm. um maybe let people listening know kind of where you are in the world maybe both physically but also what's alive in your heart right now Mm -hmm. well that's a big one um well i'll start with the physical um i live in western wisconsin which is in the in the um uh, northern part of the midwestern united states um quite close uh in fact to the mississippi river um about a half hour's drive uh from minneapolis and st paul by the way which is minneapolis was where robert Bly lived um so I'm, I'm kind of um just sort of in the heart of the country uh, i live in a a small college town uh near the edge of uh, wisconsin it's called river falls and it and in fact it does have a falls which is literally across the street from our house one of the branches of the river the kinnick river travels past that and um I think uh, I think we who live in in this town really understand the river to be part of our health. So the river is a is an important part of our lives, and uh, I do a lot of my writing uh, about the river or around the river. So that's where I am uh, physically. It's also a renowned uh, trout stream, so it's highly prized by trout fishermen. And um, um, hmm. and very clean, a very clean river. We've we've taken care of it. So, um, so it's kind of it's kind of our jewel. What is where am I? What's close to my heart right now? Um, well, I'm I've, I'm seventy five years old, and uh, I've been writing poetry uh, seriously since I was was thirty. Uh, I've published 10 books of poems and a few other kinds of books uh, besides. Uh, I'm working on mm, a couple of things. I'm working on a new poetry collection. I'm looking working on a very long range, long term memoir of uh, my my friendship and uh, uh, my my learning from Robert Bly because I was. I was Robert's um, personal secretary since um, when was that? 1990. So I have <laughs> I have a lot of I have a lot of journal entries about Robert Bly, which I'm trying to boil down into something uh, that would make a coherent memoir. So those are, are a couple of the things that I'm close to right now. Mm. It kind of leads me to the obvious question about. Um how you came into into poetry as a as a if we could call it a vocation um and 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 yeah. how that kind of is maybe entangled with 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 how you met robert sure well i i i knew from from my teens that i was on a writer's path um it was just one of those things and i happened to get some uh, uh good mentoring from a couple of older writers who encouraged me to think of myself as a writer when I was wow 13 or 14 so uh the, after that there kind of really wasn't any doubt uh it took me it took me a while though to figure out what kind of writer I was and that started to really coalesce when I turned 30. Uh, my my youth was in that time of upheaval of the 60s when we didn't um we didn't trust the older men much and uh we didn't really believe in the paths that they had set out for us so you know i was a hippie i was one of those people that was wandering around uh for many years actually um finally what happened um 
was I bought a one way one way ticket to Europe, and I just started uh, roaming around Europe uh, for about a year. And when I came back, um, I was thirty years old, and I began to seriously dedicate myself to poetry. So that's when that when that started to happen. And in you know in a in a few years, I was starting to get poems accepted by by journals and. Um, Mm, let's see. So that was uh, that was seventy eight that that happened, and my first book uh, of poems, "Keeping the Star," came out in nineteen eighty eight. So that's how long it it took me uh, to build up a head of steam to really become a published poet. Mm. Were, were you so, writing prior to um, prior through your twenties? I mean, was it, were, were you? Oh yeah, things were happening. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, fruitlessly and 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 flailingly, but yes, I, yeah, I, 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 I wrote steady, you know, from my teens on. I never right. stopped. Mm. Who have, are your Who are your influences in those kind of early years, kind of leading up to that? I guess kind of pivotal trip away to Europe. <laughs> well, um, I didn't turn out to be the kind of writer that I I thought I would by any means. Um, I, I I really wanted to be a fantasy and science fiction writer, but I found out that I had a not a gift for narrative particularly, but a gift for you know capturing a moment. So my gift was much more suited to poetry than it was to fiction, but I didn't know that for a long time. So you know Ray Bradbury was one of my early influences. Um, the science fiction writer Philip K. Dick, you know, you know, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. I actually met Philip K. Dick when I was uh, rambling around Europe. Um, I was picking grapes in the Beaujolais, and I learned that there was a science fiction festival in Metz, uh, and we had a few days off, so I hitchhiked up there, and uh, Philip K. Dick was guest of honor, um, and I actually managed to get him to sit down with me and talk for about 20 minutes or so. It was, it was at that point, it was one of the great experiences of my life. Wow. You know, I, I, let me just interlude for a second there because Metz <laughs> as, a, as a, as a compass point on the earth is actually a, a pivotal town in my life too. Really? Mm, yeah. Really? I had some experiences there in my early twenties, which really shaped who I am. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So I, yeah, you know, yeah. um, Thomas, I thought you were going to mention kind of beat generation poets and things like that. Um, yeah, I, I I was exposed to them too, of course. Um, and actually, um, before uh, before I went to college, they you know they were my my main influence writing poetry, but and you know poetry was was kind of a sideline for me at that point, and I was trying to write fiction. Mm, mm. but yeah yeah I, I, i've got shelves of, of beat literature too yeah i still enjoy them oh it's good stuff i find myself drifting back there quite mm -hmm, often mm -hmm, quite often mm -hmm. yeah and but and tell me where did um where did robert Bly enter the picture well he entered, entered the picture in 1969 um i was um i was i was going attending the university right here about two blocks away from where i sit uh, at the moment and um a couple of our um english professors were going to minneapolis to hear uh a reading by poets uh against the vietnam war uh several of us students uh, wanted to go along so uh, we got to hear uh, Bly, we got to hear Galway Cannell, Robert Creeley, uh, Ed Sanders of the Fugs, which I admit at that time was the only one I'd heard of and was the real draw for me. I, I, still, I still love Ed Sanders um, and, and a few others. Uh, so that's where, that's where Robert entered the picture for me and he was at the height of his power at that point uh reading the uh, or maybe not even reading maybe just reciting uh the teeth mother naked at last uh i remember he uh he performed uh 
uh, a piece by Mark Twain uh, called The War Prayer uh, as well. Uh, so all of a sudden, uh, I, I was awake to Bly at that point. We actually got invited to a party afterwards at, <laughs> at a professor's house. And uh, as is the case uh, so often with these things, all of the, the poets who had been performing ended up standing around in the kitchen drinking and talking. And the rest of us were too intimidated to go go in and, and pester them. So I think I ended up sitting under a table playing a guitar with a bunch of other younger younger students. Oh, wow. So I didn't meet I didn't meet Robert until oh, maybe maybe five years later uh, when he came uh, to do a reading uh, at our school. And then that was a you know that was one of those crucial meetings. Yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, extrapolating forward from there, you wind up, you know, um, uh, very deeply involved in, in, in the men's, um, I guess, men's movement and, and the, the Minnesota mm -hmm. Men's Conference and um, yeah. all the rest of it. So I guess there was a time when you kind of joined the band in a sense. And it, it, it was that next meeting kind of the pivotal moment for that to happen or was there more to play out yet? No, that, no, that, no, 74, that was still... That was still before the the men's work uh, took place, which you know was, was a few years later, at least um, into the uh, you know late seventies or early eighties. The <clears throat> the crucial piece of information that I got from Robert was um, we were we were sitting around once again after a reading, but I, this time I was I was talking to him. This is 1974, right here in this town uh, where I live. And uh, I think um, the English professors all wanted to talk about uh, the new criticism or something like that. And Robert was completely bored with it. And we were sitting near each other. And he suddenly out of the blue asked me, um, what's your sign? And I said, I'm a Capricorn. And he said, well, I am too. And... Uh, he said, it takes us a long time uh, to find our direction. And for me at that time, I was um, I was about 26 years old and I was I was somewhat adrift. And that was encouraging because it suggested to me that. There was still time uh, and that it was in some ways kind of in a natural course of things. That I was just floating like that. And it was a, you know, maybe three years later that I that I went to Europe and then really kind of started to enter. I started to enter that uh, chrysalis out of which the the moth or the butterfly finally began to emerge. Mm. Yeah. So that was a that was a crucial. If if I had never gotten anything else from Robert, that would have been enough to make its imprint on me for the rest of my life isn't it amazing just a, a couple of words here and there um from mm -hmm. someone of influence mm -hmm. like that can make, can make yeah. all the difference but you know you, you talked yeah. earlier about the fact that come 1990 <clears throat> and you're his personal secretary so i i, I feel like mm -hmm. there's there's a gap of a couple of decades there where you obviously really kind of built up a relationship a, a, a strong yeah a strong friendship yeah. yes you're right about that and that's part of what I've been writing about uh, those last couple of years. Mm. Um, yeah, it took, it took a long time, uh, <clears throat> but I started to <clears throat> become a familiar, you know, figure to him. I would go to all of his readings and, you know, I, I was very engaged with his work and um, uh, let's see, let me just think here for a second. I went I went to work for him in 1990 and uh the precipitating cause of that was the volume of correspondence that was coming in after Iron John was published you, you know he'd often you know just hired you know his you know his kids to help him with you know some of the typing but at that point it was you know, it was on a whole different level. And I just luckily was available 
So, you know, that, that wouldn't have always been true either. So that was another, that was another place where the, where the fates really stepped in and helped me out decisively. Mm. Was it interesting to see the the kinds of correspondence that was coming in as, as a kind of reaction or a response to, to Iron John? I'm sure you would have seen the, the full the full gamut. Oh, oh, sure. You know, it, it was all interesting to me. Mm. Um, I mean, <clears throat> you know, my 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 time with Robert was a just a priceless literary uh, education. Mm. No, I mean, I mean more than you know, more than just um, more than just the content of his work, which you know was also tremendously you know interesting and important to me. But just how he how he conducted himself as a literary person. I mean, I was taking notes all along the line, and you know, I use I use those things I've learned from him all the time. Mm. Yeah, um, it was you know, kind of like a very small school that I went to. <laughs> well, you know, and then the interesting thing is, is that, you know, I, I feel the same way, you know, I never had the opportunity to to meet the man. I'm on the other side mm. of the world. And yet, you know, he's had an utterly profound influence on my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, I guess um, I, one of the things that's coming up for me listening to you now is um. And I've heard others speak to this, but I'd be really interested in your perspective. Is how did mm. how, how was Robert surprised about the the popularity of Iron John and kind of what it you know the ripples and uh, the, everything that had sort of occurred from that point, or how was it for him on the release of that? I don't know if it was a surprise. Um, I think. <clears throat> I think there had been a momentum building for several years and his public profile was rising and rising and rising. Um, you know, maybe, you know, he, he must've been surprised by being a, a bestseller, but um, he didn't, I don't ever remember him saying that, you know, I think it was more, you know, okay, you know, this is what's happening. I'm equal to it. You know, I can handle it and he could handle it. Mm. Uh, if it had happened to somebody else, uh, it might not have gone as well. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. from there, there was such a groundswell and and the conferences mm -hmm. began and, and the whole, you know, idea mm -hmm. of kind of what yeah. many refer to as kind of the mythopoetic men's movement started and the entrance of, of James Hillman and, and Michael Mead and, and others. So I guess you were kind of completely caught up in that kind of uh, maelstrom. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I guess the other thing is, you know, this had this had been building up for, you know, at least half a decade. So uh, I, I do remember that um, we had a little uh, a little mythopoetic men's magazine that we were publishing in the Twin Cities. I don't know if you've ever run into it. It's called Inroads. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I do remember us having discussions about <clears throat> whether or not <clears throat> you know the impending exposure was going to be a you know a good thing or not for us. I think we were a little bit worried that that it wouldn't be mm. and somehow that the I don't know that the that the vessel or the container would would get leaky and and um and that we lose some of our our mojo with that mm. and how do you feel now looking back <laughs> um <clears throat> well i i think i think that i think those fears were borne out to some extent and you know once again in this crazy country that i live in the the polarization around that was just incredible i mean you know there's a whole book of <clears throat> of women responding to the men's movement that <laughs> I, I swear i swear to you i couldn't find any evidence that any of the contributors read iron john the whole way through um you know and sharon dubiago uh, the poet made these you know 
extravagant attacks against Robert that were completely um, unjustified. You know, he was accused of being a warmonger, and she called him our, you know, our Gulf War poet. And, uh, nobody, nobody I know of in poetry in this country was more active in opposing um, our wars than than Robert was. So it was, you know, it was very unfair. But I don't know. I mean, that's I guess that's the nature of. Uh, nature of this uh, universe that we're in uh, op uh, strong positions generate opposition and then suddenly you've got two you know two forces that are extreme mm. I don't know that I don't know that the I don't know that what we were doing was extreme but it was uh it, it was it was definitely not understood for what it was mm. But also, you know, as you say, you know, the other side of, of, of that particular coin is just, you know, the amount of the amount of men, you know, over the decades that um, mm -hmm. have been helped so tremendously, which has in turn, you know, helped with mm -hmm. their families, their partners, mm -hmm. their loved ones, mm -hmm. the community, etc. And, um, you know, I know mm -hmm. even now, you know, in, in, in so many decades later, men that, you know, have gone as far as to say as they may not even be on the planet if they came across, if they didn't come across that work. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, my, myself, <clears throat> myself included, to some degree. Like you know, I remember coming across I and John. I was in a, I was in a pretty dark place. Um, you know, and it's not. It mm -hmm. wasn't ultimately mm -hmm. curative, but it gave me something to 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 hang on to and something to explore and a thread to follow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think all of us who participated uh, owe a debt uh, to that work that was done. Um, I I often think that um, at the time of my own uh, father's death, we had reached um, a certain level of friendliness toward each other that I don't think would have been possible if I hadn't done some of that work mm. because we had a, a, a combative relationship. And... Uh, you know, it was through Robert's work, you know, primarily that I began to see it as important to try, you know, to try to improve that relationship, you know, by putting some of my own ego stuff aside mm -hmm. and trying to understand his life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's, um, that's what happened uh, in my case anyway. It, mm -hmm. it worked. It uh, took. So... Yeah, absolutely. I can. I feel yeah. that, and thank you for sharing that. I um. Yeah. I, also, I, I wonder how the uh, the addition of some of these other men, um, some of these other uh, teachers like uh, like James Hillman and, and, and Michael Mead, and you know, how, how was that for you uh, personally when you started to see you know the kind of sphere of, of influence kind of broaden far beyond Robert and Robert kind of putting his arm around these others and and bringing them in so beautifully as he did. Well, you know that was part of part of Robert's genius. I always said that Robert had a genius for community and, and he did. Um, uh, at least, you know, in my life and in my circle of friendships and acquaintances, I, you know, I know many, 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 many dear friends that I don't think I, I would have met if it hadn't been for us coming together over some facet of Robert's work mm. um, and and you know just as he you know as he moved through this world he met these extraordinary teachers and and brought them in and you know in it in its heyday you know I would say that you know that work was like a fabulous feast going to one of the conferences there were so many brilliant uh presenters and teachers well you know we we got spoiled because um that was a highly unusual situation mm. i i don't know that there's anything anything quite like that right now what do you think no i i think they're uh they're uh, facsimiles but they're certainly n nowhere near um, no, nothing like it. And, and thankfully enough, we have so much of that archived, you know, there's so many, so much yep. opportunity to go back and, and listen. And, uh, 
You know, I find myself doing that again and again, and I know so many other men that do, you know. And also I had the opportunity, you know, which is a beautiful thing to, um, a, a little blessing from COVID, but to, to join you know, the Minnesota men's conferences when they when they went online for a couple oh, of years. Oh, yeah, so, sure. Yeah. yeah so uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in fact, that was the first time I had the opportunity to to listen to you speak and and and, and be in your presence was, you know, mm. on a on, on a grid full of men on a Zoom screen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Mm. So I guess um, what I'm saying is it's it's still it's it's still there. It's still accessible. It's still going. And it's and and to me, the the, the beauty is still very present. Do you let me ask you this? Uh, do you think that there are any newer uh, teachers of that kind of work that are showing promise out there? Because I can't tell. Um, Look, I, I definitely, it's different. You know, I, I think mm-hmm. there are a yeah. few, but I don't think yeah. Um, yeah. you're never going to be able to duplicate um, what was happening um, back then. Um, you, I, I'm not sure. Right, I'm sure another, not, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't think you can mm-hmm. find another Hillman, another another mm-hmm. Maladoma Somme, um, another mm-hmm. another Martin mm-hmm. Practel. I mean, they all had their unique mm-hmm. geniuses, which I think it's it's impossible mm-hmm. to replicate. Um, so yes, I, I think there's some yeah. really interesting teachers out there at the moment, but but they're different. You know, it's 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 you know, Jung talked about the spirit of the depths and the spirit of the times, and it's those the intermingling of those two things which makes the person mm-hmm. right. Well, the spirit of the times is very different now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely, completely. Mm. So. So Thomas, I, I know you've you've been you've ha- had some books, you know, recently um, birthed into the world. You, you said you, uh, you've been pretty prolific um, of late. Uh, I mean, for me, just as a kind of maybe a backdrop for others listening, um, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the way I see your poetry, it's uh, and, and I know this is kind of um, confirmed by what I've read about you too that uh, it's very kind of nature based, and particularly around the area where you live. And you talked so beautifully earlier about the about the river nearby. And in fact, I think you've even there's a title of a book which contains the the name of that river you've written about it specifically if i can yeah remember. yeah it's a it's a it's a chat book it's uh it's a shorter book maybe a couple of dozen poems but yeah mm-hmm. mm. Kinnick, so, Kinnick. yeah that's it and so um mm-hmm. so i guess is, is that a fair representation of your work um the, the, it, it, to me there's a bit of well there's a there's a lot in there that i, I feel you know there's a bit of I feel a bit of William Stafford in there when I think about that kind of work. Mm, um, mm, but mm. is that is that how is that kind of representation of you? Does that do you feel that fits personally? I I think I've kind of been stably based in a, you know, not, I wouldn't call it an experimental style. Experimental styles are very popular now, especially in academia. Uh, my you know my my influences uh, you know are really the the generation born in the 1920s uh, you know as, as you as you start in on learning how to say what you most urgently need to say the reason that you know which is the very reason that you admire and imitate you know an older poet you gradually realize there are parts of your personality that are getting left out of your work so you know, Robert has this great translation of Rilke. I live my life in growing orbits that move out over the things of this world. I, I think you know, if a poet is really growing, that's what they're that's what they're doing. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to let my my poetry right now be <laughs> as strange as 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 I am. Um, and you know how strange that is, and you know, according to the rest of the world, is is kind of moot. I just know that there are areas, you know, in, in myself that I haven't quite let into the the poetry yet. So, mm-hmm. uh, but but to answer your question, uh, yeah, nature uh, is is important. Um, you know, love is important. Uh, spirituality is important. So, I think that my my work generally tends to revolve around that you know that cluster of concerns um but i try not to be dull and i try not to be boring you know that's that's the one thing that i absolutely do not want to be in this world i do not want to be dull or boring so that's my struggle 
<laughs> well, you know, expressing that 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 strangeness of late, perhaps, um, will never will never make you dull and, and boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I hear that Thomas as a as a as a an element of 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 elderhood, which you've you know really earned. But that that kind of strangeness that that I guess you know the word weird comes to mind, which Michael Mead likes to use a lot. You know, I feel that that's <clears> um, <throat> that's <throat> that's earned. Um, you know, and and and, and, you, and you're allowed to do that now. <laughs> yeah you know a big change you know came a, a few years ago um uh without going into it too much um uh right around uh <clears throat> christmas 2019 uh my wife krista had a serious stroke and around the same 24 hours i was diagnosed with prostate cancer whammo whammo mm. so she was she was in hospital and rehab for three months. Meantime, I was kind of dealing with my situation. And we're both doing really well right now. Um, and then, and then, you know, about three months later, COVID comes along. And <clears throat> there was <clears throat> that was a that was a certain kind of crucible uh, for me. Uh, <clears throat> it 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 definitely tested my you know, my strength as a, you know, as a person, you know, and as a man and, you know, as, as a lover, uh, too. Um, I, I have a poem in, uh, <clears throat> in my most recent book of poems called, you don't know what love is. It's the title of an old song. Uh, but in a certain way, you know, my love had never been, been tested like it was at that time. Mm. Um, that was, a that, that that winter was a a real crucible for me and i think it i think it also caused me to be a little bit more honest with myself about you know who i am and you know what i wanted and um i you know i feel like a a, a different person actually since mm -hmm. all of that happened yeah, and uh, thank you as far yeah. as i'm concerned it's an improvement <laughs> Well, hopefully it's always an improvement but uh yeah what a what what a crucible that was thank you for yeah. for sharing that yeah. i'm i'm feeling yeah. um i'm feeling drawn to to ask you if if you wouldn't mind um maybe even reciting that poem for for us uh, obviously uh, well that's an ask happened, you're welcome to... to have it right here it's in the book <laughs> called medicine year uh, medicine year and um this is kind of an audacious book because it's it was all written in 2020 and uh, usually it takes me about four or five years to write a book of poems. Uh, and I thought, am I really actually writing an entire book of poems this year? And by the time we got into the fall, I, I realized, yes, yes, the, this is really happening. So maybe the only time I ever do this, I, I maybe I hope it is, <laughs> but uh, this is uh this is called, you don't know what love is. Uh, and, it's from uh, rehab on New Year's Eve. So this is what I was doing New Year's Eve 2019. You can only watch in courage as she slowly lifts each fork full of mashed potatoes, chicken, and carrots to her mouth. She is deliberate, slow in her wheelchair, perched higher than you, tired and undemonstrative after the rigors of the day's therapy. She speaks only with her eyes. Those eyes send you back to all that wishful talk in your teens and 20s about love, to which you pretended knowledge. Kid, you want to know what love looks like? The present moment asks that far back would be Romeo. Don't take your eyes off the woman in the wheelchair, lifting with such care and effort her mashed potatoes. So, <laughs> you don't know what love is. That's that's what it said to me. So, wow, that was that's a very early poem in the book. So it gets better. Ben. <laughs> it's not a it's not a grim or depressing book, I don't think, but. Um, but that's kind of how it felt. Mm. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. 
Um, Thank you for asking. You can feel you can feel the honesty and the the the, the moment like just, just coming through. Yeah. It's, uh, wow. Yeah. And, and everyone, we're all as you're saying, things are on a more even keel now in sense of in the terms of how, how you guys are doing. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we've, we've been very lucky. Uh, we've had some good doctors and some good healers. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the things uh, that I did as a change was um, during that period, I, I began a Qigong practice and um, uh, I, I haven't missed a day since St. Patrick's day, 2020. Uh, I'm very, I'm very dedicated to it. And I, I really believe it's, it's um, helped my healing a lot. Mm. and hers too we we do it together oh, that's beautiful when you you bring in a kind of a movement discipline like that particularly together um mm -hmm. there's so much there's strong medicine in that isn't there yeah very very much very mm. much mm. and so i i'm guessing that, that both those books that, that that came out last year are, are strongly informed by um what you went through over the past couple of years um not just medicine year but the, the other yeah. as well Oh, you know, not so much. Um, okay, I'll just talk a little bit about this too. Mm, <laughs> it's too. called it's called poetry on the side of nature, and uh, the subtitle is writing the nature poem as an act of survival. Um, this is actually this is actually something that I started. Um, mm, well, it's based on some teaching uh, that I've done over the years. Um, you know, I've taught uh, classes in. Uh, nature poetry but i realized at some point that i was starting to develop my own you know my own theory about you know what the you know the western nature poem is i i'm not i'm not equipped to speak about worldwide nature poetry and i know that it exists everywhere but uh you know i come out of the out of the english poetry tradition and you know that includes the english romantics and and the american transcendentalists and I uh, I had I had developed some thoughts about the nature poem as a response to the felt distance of of Western uh, people since the first industrial revolution in the eighteenth and nineteenth centuries. Um, at some point, my teach my uh, my students were saying, you know, you should you should write something about this, get it out there in the world. And I, I thought about that, and I thought, yeah, that's you know, that's a book that I could do. Uh, and I started to seriously work on it in uh, in summer of 2016 when it appeared kind of horrifyingly clear that it it was possible that you know that Trump was a was a credible contender for the u.s presidency and by the time i by the time i finished the first draft of the book you know, trump was president and i've just felt that the the floodgates were open and some of the um some of the safeguards uh were already being pulled down and that the threat to the environment was uh, intensifying so I, I really wanted to get this book out. It was originally supposed to come out in in spring of 2020. Um, but then COVID hit and the publisher said, no, I don't think we can do it this year. How about next year? And I said, well, OK. But then it didn't happen the next year and it dragged on and on. And finally, the publisher went down. Uh, I don't I wasn't privy to to the reasons, but uh, so as of uh, as of February last year, uh, 2022, I was I was without a publisher and I was I was strongly thinking about publishing it myself. But luckily, uh, a Minnesota press called Red Dragonfly Press picked it up and we got it out right away. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just i'm i'm right now doing launch readings for it oh wow that's so, cool mm. yeah yeah mm. yeah it was you know it was there it was, there was a long there was a long long uh road uh to this book uh being a reality 
Well, I, I think the timeliness has only kind of grown greater, if, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Uh, yeah, I, I wish it wasn't, but there you have it. Mm. So maybe there was a reason, some kind of mystery workings behind the scenes there, which was kind of holding it off. Yeah, I don't know. I used to, used to wake up in the middle of the night and think, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, is this thing ever going to get out? Yeah. Uh, and then I try to, you know, uh, lull myself back to sleep. Say, I'll think about that in the morning when I get up. Mm. Mm. But, um, yeah. And so I imagine there's, there's more writings underway and there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a book, the next one coming, or maybe the next couple, as you were saying, you tend to often be working on more than one at once these days. Yeah. I think, um, hmm. Uh, my best guess is, uh, that, There'll be another uh, book of poems coming along pretty soon, maybe mm. like next year. Mm. I, I think it's I think it's even done right now. I, I was starting something before all of the disasters, and then I I junked that and put out this book medicine year, but I still had um, oh you know at least half a good book uh, from before that. And now I have at least half a good book from after that. So I'm putting them together and. Um, I'm hopeful. Oh, that's that's amazing. Well, I look forward to see what comes through. You know, I, I spent a little bit of, of the morning um, knowing, obviously, that I was going to be chatting to you. Um, and I was reading um, parts of Waking Before Dawn. And, oh, uh, oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, kind of all the way back to kind of 2006, 2007. Yeah. Um, and I actually got uh, a particular poem caught my attention. It was actually Trust. Trust. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm wondering, kind of, when I when I call that poem in, what what comes up for you? Well, it's 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 uh, <laughs> it's my greatest hit. Oh, well, there you been go. Reprinted to a fairly well. Uh, mm. I could read it for you, but I have to run upstairs to get the book. Uh, is is that something you'd like uh, me to do? Trust. It's like so many other things in life, to which you must say no or yes. So you take your car to the new mechanic. Sometimes the best thing to do is trust. The package left with the disreputable looking clerk. The check gulped by the night deposit. The envelope passed by dozens of strangers. All show up at their intended destinations. The theft that could have happened doesn't. Wind finally gets where it was going through the snowy trees and the river even when frozen arrives at the right place and sometimes you sense how faithfully your life is delivered even though you can't read the address oh, thank you there's there's so much in there for me uh, thanks, I, thanks. I, I, I love the line about wind finally getting to where it's yeah. going yeah yeah, mm. I, I think there's probably a little bit of Robert Bly in that line. <laughs> it, it does. And, and I think there might be a little bit of William Stafford in that poem, too, in general. I mentioned earlier, I, I definitely see a bit, a bit of William Stafford um, through, through, threaded through your work, which is, he's, he's, he's up there um, in, in my estimations. I, I find myself reading a lot of um, William's work. So, um, um, yeah, it would be an honor to be, uh, to be uh, up there with with the esteemed ones like Robert and uh, William. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, when I was uh, when I was younger, uh, well, let's say uh, let's say when I was in my twenties and thirties, I could not hear William Stafford. Uh, I was attuned to the intense, uh, fiery register of Robert Bly and uh, Stafford's tune. I could not catch. So that was something for me that that came with with uh, maturity. Was there was there a moment, or was it more of a kind of process of of, of feeling into it? Uh, I I don't know. I don't I don't think there was a moment. I think I just kind of suddenly. I don't know. I, I was just suddenly able to uh, approach his work with a more mature mind and. Uh, and 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 a, I suppose a less adolescent need 
for excitement. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, I had that big time for a long, for a long while. Wow. There's this line that, that, um, that, um, uh, uh, Robert says to William in that beautiful uh, documentary, a literary friendship. And, uh, he talks about the mm. difference between their, their two styles. And I, I wish I could remember it. Um, mm. it's mm. something like you, uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, yeah. but it's, it's, it's about Stafford's whispering, um, to those that are awake and, and Bly yelling at those who are asleep or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember that, but that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's not quite right. So, but it's, 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 it's in good that, enough. It's, yeah. It's, it's good it's, enough. It's in the ballpark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and, and, you know, I guess having the reinforcement of people like Rob I and mean, Robert was, you know, he spoke very highly ab about your work and, um, you know, I, I've read some quotes and that, that must've been, uh, mm. I mean, that, that must've been a beautiful thing to get such high praise or almost a blessing, um, from someone that, uh, that you look up, looked up to like that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You're absolutely right. Mm. Mm. Um, I've got, I've got, a little, I've got a little line. kept me going for a long time. Yeah. I've got a little line here actually, which, I, which I can, um, which I can repeat where he said, um, uh, he described you as a high spirited poetry <laughs> horse riding over the hills of emotion. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. remember that one? Oh yeah, sure. That's on the back cover of uh Waking Before Dawn. So yeah. yes, I've yeah. used it many times. Yeah, yeah. I've used it many times. Yeah. That's oh, a beautiful thing. And others too. I yeah. mean, you know, I feel quite honored actually having this conversation to um be chatting with you, such a such a renowned uh, poet. It's beautiful. It feels great for me. So thank you. Oh, thank you. You know, I mean, one of the things that Robert taught us too was just the uh, importance of uh, of blessing and reminding us of our ability to bless others. So mm. I I try to practice that as much as I can in my own life now too, because I know how important it was to me. Mm. Mm. Are you still teaching? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. So as a matter of fact. Uh, my classes since COVID started have been online. So anybody anywhere can take them. The last, the last class I taught, uh, I had someone who was uh, taking it in Berlin. So, That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I will have, yeah. I'll have to share the coordinates of all that. Uh, um mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the group but that's that's wonderful to know that you're still out there and, and actively teaching mm -hmm. people like you i i believe are so needed in the world for this this group of um up and coming aspiring young young poets mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well thomas like it's just been wonderful to chat with you and um as i said um before we we, we began um recording that I, i'm just so pleased that you're actually going to be joining um our next uh elder wisdom circle alongside uh walton stanley and, and, and tim young such um you know esteemed members of, of our community and such such you know they've been teaching now in our space for i think about three years now and so to have you join them mm -hmm. um and to have you sharing your your wisdom and, and your presence with, with our men is just going to be truly wonderful so thank you well i'm uh I'm I'm really pleased that i was invited to join them and i'm looking forward to this a lot so uh Thank you for your kindness. Mm. Well, thank you for your time.